Funding for Greater Chattanooga is provided by EPB Fiber Optics, Kelly Subaru, and Earth's Remedies of Dalton. I actually started drawing at five years old. I saw a drawing in color pencils of Superman and Batman, and it blew my mind. And when I saw this drawing, I had a religious experience. Actually, there was a light that came in through the window, and at that point, I wanted to try to do that for the rest of my life. So all my life, I've been pursuing art. I was raised in College Hill Courts, that's on the west side of Chattanooga, and uh, it is a housing project. As a kid, I, we didn't know we was poor. We thought it was just life. So I had no idea. We were very, very poor, one of the poorest people in the projects. But we didn't know it because my mother and father was with us. And we, and we had love, you know. Ralph Ellison wrote a book called The Invisible Man. In Chattanooga, we have an invisible community. Unless, you know, something bad happens. So uh, the only thing you hear about the community is when somebody gets shot or, you know, something horrible happens. This community is an awesome, wonderful, beautiful community few negative elements, the kids that fell through the cracks, they are the negative element in the community. So it was, it's a little lighter here, I'm gonna leave it like that. So now when you get to a certain part, I want you to think about clouds. So you would clean your brush, wipe your brush off. You don't need water in your brush, by the way. Your brush can be dry. Then you would get white, is everybody watching? Is everybody looking? We had something, my wife and I, that uh, we knew that we could give. I, we really didn't want to start a nonprofit because it's too much work. <laughs> no, we didn't want to do that work. All I want to do is paint, man. <laughs> you know? But uh, we did a free art school one summer for 10 teenagers, and I used up all of my art supplies. <laughs> and I saw that the kids really, you know, that, that summer, they grew. You know, I could see that they were focused and getting better, and they had found something that they could kind of latch on to, you know? I mean, it was beautiful. It's not what's more, because this line should echo that one, right? See how that one is? Move your pants up, move it straight over. You see where that I really get great pleasure when I see a child getting lost in something that they're doing. What helps, though, um, what helps them to get lost, what helps that whole process is that um, Charlie kind of guides them in the art making. So you're going to do simple, a simple design. You're going to put rectangles on your uh, picture. You're going to use only rectangles and maybe squares, that shape or straight lines. You can get real creative because you might do straight lines like that, you might do straight lines like this, and you might say, well, these are straight lines and it made a triangle, but I don't want any circles, no circles, okay? That guidance tends to be a type of anchor for them, something for them to hang on to, because if they've never engaged in an art project before, it's uncharted waters for them, and they're so unsure, you know. Uh, we've, we've had kids cry in the class because they felt they weren't doing it right, weren't doing this right. I can't do this, I, you know, this is not right. I don't like it, it's ugly. And we've had to really try and encourage them, tell them that, you know, we're helping you do it. We're gonna help you do it. And uh, we've seen those kids just get so confident 
about their work and about their uh, own judgment. So you hold the rule with one hand so it don't move, right? Then you draw the line on the other side so you don't run into your hand. Like this. See how I'm doing it? So, yeah, you gotta hold it down and put your pencil right up against the edge of the ruler. Let's see. What's that look like? Is that straight? I'm gonna show yeah. you all the next step. Any of this stuff you can cut up. And you're gonna cut, say for instance, this shape here, this rectangle. So I can actually put this here, make a cut. It, don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. So then I can put this right there. Saw that? <laughs> right? So you got it, right? Okay, good. The way I teach the classes is I see them as artists already. So they are sort of like apprentices in my mind. And so we just come and work in a creative environment. You know, I don't try to teach them any philosophy at all. I just love them. Say for instance, you cut out a shape to fit into these shapes. Looking good, Harmony. We do see the effects of poverty and marginalization. We see it. We see the effects of it on the kids. You know, we don't want to present the kids as, as victims or anything like that because children are remarkably resilient. They are. But uh, we've met so many kids over the years who've been through so much. And, and we're used to smiling kids. Well, I am anyway. We're used to kids smiling and eager to learn and, and you know, inquisitive. But then you get kids coming in who are completely the opposite. They shut down. They're, uh, you know, they, when you ask them to smile, like for photographs and stuff like this, if you ask them to smile, they kind of grimace. You know, it's almost like, and it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. So um, when Charlie, excuse me, but when Charlie can get through with art, it, uh, it makes me happy. It makes my heart happy. I would say 95% of the kids that we service are single parent homes. And the majority have never seen a positive black male role model. And it's very important that kids see people doing great things who look like them. And especially when those men are interested in them, who will spend time with them and focus on them, care about them, and try to promote them because we promote our kids. <laughs> yeah. My kids really enjoy it, and Mr. Newton and his wife are perfect, wonderful people, and they're loving, and you can feel it. Charlie Newton and I am Newton. They are the founders of Splash, and they teach. Yeah. Actually, I'll just let Charlie speak about it because, I mean, it's his thing. <laughs> I was just telling one of the mothers that. Hey, I wasn't in an art gallery when I was five years old. So this is fantastic that our kids get a chance to you know, visit art galleries and, and museums. And to, uh, Splash is basically a free art school for kids who might not be able to pay for uh, art classes, low income usually. And we, we ask for your support of Splash. Everything in there is for sale. When we sell a piece of artwork, 50% goes to the family and 50% goes back into our program. And so we want to share the value of art with our kids, so we have future. We projects. showed over 40 pieces of, of artwork, framed it and everything. And uh, it was amazing because, for one thing, people who had never heard about Splash before came in and saw the kids' work, talked with us, and, and we also sold 11 paintings. And I'm really excited about that, you know. I'd love to sell the children's artwork because, you know, they can see that, hey, people will buy what I did or show or come and look at something that I made. I made that, you know? And so I'm special 
you know, kids can see that, you know, I'm necessary. The world needs me. You know, they need my creativity. I've learned how to hold a paint brush and different type of paint forms. And I've also learned that painting isn't kind of like what you think it is. It's not like just drawing on paper. You can not show your emotions with art. She really likes it a lot. She's actually sold a piece, so she's like, oh, I did. I sold something, and she was really excited about that. So she just keep we keep coming as long as she want to come on, be her driver. <laughs> My son, we moved to the west side 11 years ago. My son started coming. Now he's seeing that his pictures are selling. So some of his artists are starting to sell and now he can see that hard work pays off. They getting discipline. They getting to earn money. Them, I appreciate their support. They love just caring about my son so much that they stop time in their day to come here to teach my son. So I appreciate it. I like it. Art is good for every child. Every child, regardless of a socioeconomic status, deserves to be creative. You know, it's part of being a human being. Now, art gave me uh, confidence in who I am as a human being, as a person. Art uh, gave me purpose in life. Art made me look a little closer at the beauty in a sky or the beauty of a human being, a person, another person, you know. And uh, that's what I'm hoping the kids will get out of that. And I'm also hoping that our city would see we need to reach out to these children in a real way, you know, because they are full of nothing but potential. But if we wait too long, what happens is the streets can call them. And uh, when that child can find something within themselves, you know, to value, then they have a chance. They have a chance at making it.